Welcome to, welcome to the Dirty Sports Podcast. Welcome to the Dirty Sports Podcast. I am Andy Ruther, coming to you live from the Smut Studio in Dennis Beach, California, with my co-host, Joey. No chill, Prano. Hello, Andy. Happy Sunday. The struggle has been real. I'm just going to put it out there. Okay. And just in life in general? No. Technical difficulties again. We got to get these technical difficulties right. What what time? How long ago do you think I got over here? 45 minutes ago? You got here at 8.08 was when you texted me. Wow. It's it 50 minutes ago. Yes. It's, it's unacceptable. I agree. Unacceptable. We have two interns now. Don't, 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 don't throw that out It wasn't us. Saying, yeah, don't throw that it's us. totally the cord. Everybody. No. It is not us. Maybe it's Mevo. Maybe it's the equipment. Maybe it's it. Yeah, look, that's not my... I you know I was like we'll all meet up we'll play basketball before I'll bring mm-hmm. Trevor some hash I thought we had a good thing going here now nothing's working I'm like well this is why we can't have nice things well I'm gonna stick up for the interns on this one I think there is some oh, I see what you're doing what so you're sick of being the bad guy sick of everybody calling you angry before you were in like definitely Ruther punch the wall mode and you're like I'm not gonna let this get to me. I um, uh, feel good. I feel positive about this. Joe, you know, you, sometimes this just happens in life. Sometimes you just, your Mevo goes bad, and you know that that is what it is. Take, take these things in stride. No, you just put out lies again. I'm I'm not going to get into this whole anger. I don't have anger issues. Most people completely disagree who know me well. Uh, I don't know why you spew these lies. You're like these people who want to put these lies out there with Michael Jordan versus LeBron James. You know, it, it's it's propaganda. Uh, but yeah, we had some issues. But I will say though, uh, I did tell the guys when I won the interns before you got here. I think it. I, I understand you wanted to play basketball today. I couldn't do it because last minute, you know, I had some stuff I had to take care of. With. You had to break the Mevo. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like I had to stay home and break the equipment. But maybe that's what messed up the mojo is what I'm saying. Okay. Maybe. I, I like it. I, I We played basketball the other day. We had a good two-on-two thing going. I think this is great for bonding. I think it's great for our, our bodies, our minds. Well, let's talk about two-on-two on Friday. Oh, yeah. Is that only Friday? It was Friday. Wow. It was interns versus hosts, mm-hmm. and uh, the interns were talking a lot of trash. Yeah, grab that microphone, Trevor, please. The interns were talking a lot of trash that they were going to dominate us, and we played three games. It was 11 to 5, 11 to 3, 11 to 2. So the interns actually got worse as each game happened. Yeah. Now, let me just clarify real quick. We didn't say that we would dominate you both. We we meant more you, like it would be more of a fun one. But then Pr- Prano, I mean, the dude shot, you know, everything in, within two feet. Like, he, he gets it. Like, he's so much taller than all of us. So, like, let's let's be realistic here. Whoever's on the team with Prano is probably going to win. I mean, I said that from the beginning. I thought it was hilarious. But, I mean, you're the tallest person in here besides me. Ruther, what are you, 5'10"? <laughs> Almost. Not technically 5'10". Five. 5'9 five, <laughs> five, and a half. And Trevor, you're 5'? I think he's going by an inch. 5'9"? Yeah, five, 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 five nine. Yeah, up and and we're Twitter over there. Yeah, we're both five nine over here. See, like I mean, that's just that's just humorous. <laughs> Short. Guys. I'm not even like. What would you say? Would you say I made twenty five percent of my laps? Thirty. Your shooting percentage would have been pretty atrocious. Yeah, you had a, you had a Kobe shooting percentage. It was awful. Let's put it that way. I mean, I was missing bunnies after yeah. bunnies. Yeah, but you had forty seven rebounds. I know. So, like, <laughs> I know. That's also. I know. That's my. That's my <laughs> serious double doubles I mean, going that, on there. That's my point. That's, that's precisely my point. I'm like, can you imagine if I didn't play horribly? But but let's be honest. We actually. I don't know if you were in the room for this. We did break it down. So I know I had. The first game I hit one three, the second game I hit three, and the, the third game I hit two. So right there is we were playing by ones and twos. Yeah. So let's say that's that's twelve points out of thirty three right there. So obviously you being tall and dominating help, but the, the, hold, on, hold, on, hold on. Obviously Prano led the way, but my point is this: <laughs> your guys' only chance of ever beating us ever, I'm just gonna say it, is that I don't hit one three. Because you kind of, in a way, have to let me shoot those threes. No, we'll let you shoot them. They don't have to let Uh, you shoot them. Their only chance of winning is scoring on you every time. And honestly, between being severely out of shape, that's why I already wanted to play today. Like, 
Uh, just a couple runs. I just need I just need four or five good runs in me, and then I can start bouncing around. I for just being deathly out of shape and sort of just like being like, okay, let's give him a chance. Like I wasn't helping anybody. If, if they went by you, like Trevor got a couple went by you, got a couple buckets. I'm not like we're not playing help defense over here. I'm not <laughs> sliding over to seal the lane. Their only chance was to score on you every time, and they weren't doing it. They weren't getting the job hey, done. Prano, Prano I, I hope you won't lie. I hope you'll test it today. Yeah. We shot better from outside today. Yeah. So we, I'll tell you, we're not worried. We got, we got some <laughs> I, stuff okay, I want to. We're, we're not worried. My man Trevor's talking here, and I don't want to say that I agree with him with what he's saying, but like. I'm not worried. What are you not worried about? We'll figure it out. We'll figure. So, we'll, I'm not. I'm not saying you're gonna we're gonna grow six not, inches to my boy. Yeah, we're gonna here? figure out a game plan. We're gonna Brad Stevens it up, and we'll figure something out. We're not gonna win every single hold game. On, hold on, hold on. But this, we'll start making it interesting. Let, let me yeah. just let me just say this: the guy who's gonna Brad Stevens it up left a lighter in his mesh shorts. <laughs> then what happens all the time? Hold on a second. Let me finish, please. Can I finish? Then went into my pool, then went into my hot tub, not knowing he had a lighter in his mesh shorts, which then I didn't notice, so that's on me. Then I washed his mesh shorts in my washing machine, which could have caused a fire. I don't know how it's going to cause a fire. Uh, yeah, but it's, it's a wet lighter. Yeah, it's, <laughs> and it's going through water, but anyways. Anyway, I'm not a science guy. Yeah, uh, well, we can see that. But there's no way you'll ever beat us, ever. I'm just going to say this. Okay. There's no well, way. Well, All right. I'm I'm gonna buy a trench coat and I'm gonna stand on Trevor's yeah. shoulders yeah. and you guys it's and then over. You're gonna get another player. Yeah, <laughs> and then I'm gonna say that we Trevor's can, not honestly, here. Yeah, I was saying <laughs> we can run down all the predictions he's also been wrong on before. Yeah, that what? you've and and so this well, like I said we'll figure this out. I've been wrong on a lot of things, Trevor. Exactly. So you'll be wrong on this again too. <laughs> Why are you? Yeah, I was saying. He's so I was saying. It's not defensive. It's talking shit. Well, I'm just gonna sit here and let you just. Um, yeah, you're gonna beat us every single time. You guys, we yeah, beat you. We'll figure it by out. more points every game. Yeah. Okay. And today, and See, today, I you didn't saying, show up on the court, and we were hitting everything from the I'm outside. I'm sorry. I'm busy fucking over yeah. here trying to get shit. See what I was saying on for YouTube. the sake of, for the sake of it being interesting again. is like you know next week I should play with Trevor. And it'd be you and EJ, and no, then the next no, week no, I'll no, play no. with it's DJ. Always, it's always in terms of And then it's like, you know, see which one of you guys can you know, start stockpiling wins, and we'll keep a no, standing. I, I said that earlier. It's pride on the line now. Like, yeah. It's okay. always going to be in terms of That's fine. Helps. By the way, and I'm down with what Prano's saying, mi- mixing up teams. But Trevor yeah. over here, who's taken lots of L's, apparently has confidence, which is kind of weird. For, you think I'm scared of you? <laughs> <laughs> I'm, you think I, I'm scared of you? I don't think you are, but and I don't think you should necessarily be. But I think... No. I think that just even two days later, we played around today. I wasn't gonna. Vom- I almost vomited the first game. Yeah. So that, yeah. What, I'm saying so I'm not gonna get. But you I'm, not, I'm not gonna get less in shape. I'm not gonna hit gonna less say, than 25 percent right. of my From layups. that standpoint, you're dealing with a 36 and 38 year old guy. You guys are 25 and 26. And I also couldn't have told you the last time I shot a basketball. So that's me coming off rusty. I literally could not tell you the last time I shot a basketball. Okay. And today came out in the second. Two days later, hitting everything from the outside. Not worried about you, Uther. Sorry. <laughs> not scared of you. you. I know you want me to be. I'm not Maddie Goldberg over here. Not scared of you. Well, you should be, because that last time I recall, I drained three threes that second game in your face. Yeah, I was giving you five feet. Well, in, in my face is a stretch. Well, you shouldn't be giving me five feet. Yeah. because and, Yes, I said, we're not worried about you. We got it unlocked now. Okay. I mean, you We're guys could play one on one, and then that would, then we would know is we know, could do that. Know exactly that would also love to happen. do that as well. Hey, Bernie, I'm, you want you want to be on a team next week? Me, yeah, I'm just saying. <laughs> we'll put them on. No, the I team. don't want to be on Ruther's team. No, <laughs> that would be so I'll never funny be to watch. Team. I don't know why Trevor is coming out so aggressive on me. I'm not coming out aggressive. I feel like your I feel like your uh, tremendous anger. You know, they say that uh, energy. Like it, it, it can't just disappear. Energy has to be transferred. So like energy doesn't just wear out. So I feel like you transferred this negative energy that you had, all this anger issues, and you've really been, you've really been forcing yourself to be positive. I feel like it's all slid into Trevor, who's now gone from happy stoner to just like angry. It's not uh, anger. I just no. Not he was something. Trevor was fine, and then he hit record. And we brought up the games, and now he's no, like, no, because I just love this the one way story to go Ruther's way. Like we're supposed to be scared, you're gonna win every time. No, we're not scared of you. Well, again, I'm not we're sa- over here, Trevor. You're not even listening. I'm not even saying. I'm- you said we're never gonna win a game. Yeah, because and I have a guy you- who's six four on my team, yeah, and I'm telling That's you, why. we're not scared of you, and we'll figure it out. <laughs> 
<laughs> I don't know what else I have I to know. say. I'm not even saying it's because of me. I'm saying it's because of Prano. I, I'm you... not. I'm saying it's definitely not because of you. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm saying you shouldn't be scared of Ruther. I'm saying everybody's right here, and you guys aren't going to win a game. And we're not scared of you either. <laughs> we're not that? scared of Mr. Big Six Four over you here. You shouldn't be. We scared. already just said you're not playing help defense. We got this on Yeah, lock. yeah. I, I you're was, not yeah. going to slide every time. Yeah. I, I saw was, you I was puking. We'll I wasn't doing. You. Yeah, I wasn't doing it out of. The, we'll go by you. I wasn't doing it out of sheer being too tired yeah. and politeness. That's fine. I came. I helped one time yeah. and I blocked you and I felt terrible about it. I know and I was you like, guys. I know you guys want us to be a little scared of you guys and be a little. You I know, don't want you to be anything. I don't want you to be anything. I'm sorry you guys want us to be Chabelle. What's going on in the home life? Wait, can we talk about nothing, this? Nothing's going on. I just I know you guys want us to roll over like Maddie and Chappelle. I don't want you to do not. anything. I was trying to keep. I was trying to. Talk, I was trying so to you, like you, have. So a, you guys can talk shit, but we can't talk shit. You can talk That's shit all you want. At, okay? You can talk shit all you want. So I'm not even talking you, shit. Why are you guys just talking <laughs> shit, getting mad, and uh, it's not getting mad, but us <laughs> talking shit is just getting mad. I'm not and even we're talking defensive. shit. I was right. I was literally saying like you just said we're never gonna win a game. That's not talking shit. That's just facts. You know what I mean? Like, and you're also the same guy that said the. I guess never like, win a Super Bowl. Yeah, and was that a fact? Cr- no, yeah. it wasn't. Crazy things so happen. Maybe yeah. I'll twist an ankle. Is there Crazy meth in his weed yeah. tonight? <laughs> We're gonna start winning games. Okay. I can't Sorry, wait you to took see the it. first three. There's other games to be played. All right. Let's go. He's got pride <laughs> on the line. Let's let's turn on some Let's night go. lights and go out in the courts right now. Does Venice have night lights? No, they don't. That's what yeah. I'm saying. We got to find some homeless guy to hold up some lights or some shit. Man, can make it work. I'm like so low key right now. I know I was so chill. Now I'm like, oh man, now I have to guard Trevor the first game next time, and like, and then well, you know that's gonna suck when I bust your ankles like Alan never said I, to DJ. <laughs> Pass me the torch. Where is this coming from? My man's over there. Isn't that what they say? Man's. Isn't that what they say in the hood? My man's. Yeah, yeah. Why are they always at Nessus? Moms, my man's. man's. It's my mom. It's my man's. Like, uh, yeah, but, get your man's boy. But you know? why is it? Why is there an S? I don't know. Man, Trevor put the mic down. He's he needs the. I know. So what, fired up. What was in those peanut butter fucking uh, pretzels that I, I gave you guys I, from you know Costco? I, I gave him some hash. I've never seen the hash make somebody so angry. <laughs> I've seen make. I've seen the hash make guys go to sleep. Yeah, I know. Where'd you get hash, by the way? I don't remember. I got I got a lot I got a lot of variations on cannabis at my place. What, I don't, yeah, I, don't I was going to say, can anymore. you explain that to someone like me who does not know what is the difference between marijuana and hash? Uh, so for <laughs> man, I don't even know where to start. But uh, so when you get a pl- like when you get like a cannabis plant, it's uh it's leaves with okay. THC on it. And then you burn the leaves. This is just the THC taken off the leaves, packed tightly. Into just like a brick of just the THC. Ah, okay. Learning things here. Yeah, it's good. So it's all the good stuff and none of the the bad stuff. Well, yeah. I mean, it's not. not I mean, I guess the plants. It's not bad for you, but sure. it's, not, it's not getting you high. I know the hash was big when I lived in Spain. They all smoked hash. None of them smoked marijuana. Yeah, because they because in Europe they grow shit weed. So what they do is they turn it into hash so then you're not like smoking all the fucking you know leafs and seeds and all that shit they yeah. just they just you know make gotcha. bu- bubble hash or whatever and take just the good stuff well as much as i want to talk interns versus hosts yeah let's talk some real athletic players yeah. the, from the national basketball association yeah, let's do it let's talk about professionals so we'll start off with the game just happened yep houston uh, looked dominant again. I mean, it didn't get too close from what I saw in the second half. They're rolling now. 3-1. The second or the third game was a massacre. So they basically came through Salt Lake City, and they didn't soak. They basically pulled yeah, out their dick. They did dick. some fucking. They pulled out their dick, and there was some hardcore raw dog fucking. Yeah. It's the same thing as I said about the Warrior series. They just don't have enough firepower. Utah just doesn't have enough firepower. When they play great against Houston, it's still like, you know, they can win a game. But I've seen them play pretty well and lose by 30. Like, it's not like they got dominated. If that, if I know that doesn't sound right but it's not like it's not like oh they were making all these bonehead plays and losing by 30 yeah. in game 3 they were just they're just getting outscored 
Like, they're get, coming down, and they're making it two, and the Rockets are coming down and making it three. They're up a point. They come down. They they miss a shot. Rockets come up, make it two. They're up three points, and it just snowballs. Like, they just have so much firepower. Yeah. And and it's the same thing that's going on in the, in the Warriors series. And, you know, it kind of sucks because I know Gordon Hayward, obviously, you know, I don't know, we wanted to get out of Utah or – they didn't want to pay him or what the situation was. He he wanted to go play with Stevens, who was his college coach. But, like, he'd be a really nice piece on this Jazz team in terms of firepower. Then they'd have, like, like they're – at this point, and, I, you know, this will obviously get into something we're going to talk about later, but, like, the Utah Jazz are a nice team from, like, 10 years ago. You know? They've got, like, a big man in the middle, and they've got – you know, Donovan Mitchell and they've got Rubio and they've got, you know, they've got a lot of great role players, uh, but the NBA has changed. You need to be able to keep up with the Rockets. You need to be able to keep up with the Warriors unless your goal is just like, hey, we had a good season. We made the playoffs. We beat the Oklahoma City Thunder. Like, cool. Yeah. I like Utah. I like Quinn Snyder. I like the team that they're putting together. But like, they just don't. I mean, you, is your goal to like have Joe Ingles and James Harden trade threes? Like it's it's not going to work out in the long run. It might no. work out for one game. I'm thinking right now if they had Hayward, like how I know it, it's tough to hypothesize, but like where are they at as a team though? Realistically, they still don't have the firepower to go against the top two teams. I mean, they're better. Yeah. Significantly better. Sure. But then you look at the Celtics, who don't have Hayward right now, who don't have Kyrie. And that's why, you know, all the discussions we have about this player's greatness and that player's greatness and this team's coach, this this team's greatness and that team's coach. It's like, that's why you have to look at certain things. Like, Brad Stevens, what he has done, like, at this point, I'm going to go ahead. I think he's the best coach in the NBA. I think he's I think he's uh, like on a new level. I don't know, maybe Pops, you know. He is uh, on a new level. Yeah. M- look, Pop has had an incredible run. I'm not saying Pop isn't in the argument for best coach ever, but like he obviously has gone through some issues personally. He's obviously gone through some stuff with the personnel with Kawhi being out, with his guys getting old, but honestly, it's not like they lost Kawhi the Celtics lost Hayward and Kyrie. They haven't missed a fucking beat. And you look at what Brad Stevens has done the last couple of years there, very similar to what my boy Mike D'Antoni has done everywhere he's gone, where you're like, what the fuck? How is Jeremy Lin a goddamn superstar? How is Steven Nash a goddamn superstar? It's like uh, Isaiah Thomas, superstar, MVP candidate, then gone and traded again in the same season. Kyrie Irving looks great. Out Terry Rozier's now suddenly they're like, do we even want Kyrie back? It's like, yeah, you want Kyrie back because he's that much more talented than Terry Rozier, and Brad Stevens makes every player better. But look at what he's doing. Well, what Stevens does is he gets the most out of his players. Yeah, and what I have seen the play, and you know, during the playoffs. You see the interviews, and what I what I find always fascinating with, with the Celtics players is it's all about coach gives me confidence. It doesn't matter who they're interviewing, whether it's Tatum or Rozier or Jalen Brown. It's all about coach gives me confidence. It's like he puts it on the players. Here's the game plan. Execute. It doesn't matter. Like you're saying, it doesn't matter whether Kyrie's in there or Rozier or whoever's playing. He just wants you to execute. And they do. And it's fucking fun to watch. Yeah, it is. They are a the Celtics I mean, even are down, a fun they, like, team to watch. Down the stretch yesterday, like the the out of timeout calls. Yes, was were all fantastic. Then the way I mean, just in game was that game three? No, sorry, game two. Simmons is scoring one point. Uh, like the way he strategizes for the other team and then the way he strategizes his team and how they're going to attack the other team, it's masterful. It's masterful. Yeah. And and, and that's what I like. Look, first of all, Philadelphia pissed that game away. That was their game. 
they pissed it away. Yeah. But also, then you get to overtime, or then you get to they pissed it away, and then Boston still needed a shot. Like they still needed a shot to you know tie the game and go up and and throughout the the fourth quarter and overtime and the out of bounds plays and all that stuff. It was just, I mean, he straight up out coached the Sixers guy. And I think we need to give credit to Danny Ainge again. And I know we have in the past. The guys that they're getting, and I don't know, and I'm sure it's a combination, right, of Ainge and Stevens, but the guys that they're getting and what they're getting out of these players, it's remarkable. It's, it is. It's nothing short of remarkable to look at how well these guys are excelling, right? Like, they didn't, no one's, like, did you, did we really see how quickly that these guys would develop? The Rogiers, the Tatums, the right. Jalen Browns. I don't think anybody, but even like a guy like Marcus Smart, who was more of a scorer at Oklahoma State, he comes into the league, now he's turned into more of a defensive guy, you know, the energy type player. He's not going to be scoring a lot of points. Might get you a three here and there. You know what I'm saying? They just That's they, what I'm saying about great coaches, too. I mean, look at the Rockets right now. Like, Clint Capella is, like, a huge factor in every single one of their games. Yeah. Guys, no one knew who Clint Capella was two years ago. Yeah, James Harden's going from a guy who's like, yeah, he'd be a great six man on a team to he's going to win the MVP. Like, that's what great, great coaches do. And then you flip the other side of the coin. LeBron James, the greatest player of all time, is doing it single-handedly because Tyron Lue is just like, I don't know. Uh, what, what do we do? Like, when you look at the Jordan Clarksons and the George Hills and the Larry Rodney Nance Hoods Juniors. and all those guys. And you're like, Brad Stevens would kill for him. Yeah. Uh, Mike, Mike D'Antoni would kill for Jordan Clarkson. Yeah. He would kill for George Hill. He'd fucking kill for him. And Teron Lewis like, I don't know. I don't really know how to use him. What's going on? And then you see LeBron literally coaching the team and literally going, we have a fucking matchup here where Kevin Love can score on this guy every time. I'm going to start giving the ball to Kevin Love every time. And he's making that call. And he's getting in pick and rolls with George Hill. It's like... So so we're not going to give Tyron... Now, you and I were very... Obviously, we've been critical of Tyron Lue. But we both... Or I said he should start Tristan Thompson. He stuck with Kevin Love. Yeah. Who's had back-to-back good games. Yep. Since, you know, playing awful in the first few games. He also made the call at the end. Are we going to assume that Tyron Lue made the call at the end, which was an interesting call, and obviously it worked out, to not advance the ball with eight seconds left? That's I, Honestly, and maybe it was well, Are we Ty- saying this is all LeBron? Well, maybe it was Tyron Lue's call. Maybe it was LeBron's call. That's that's honestly not – when you have eight seconds left, that's not like the most brilliant call ever. Phil Jackson talked about that 15 years ago, about how – you know, 10, 15 years ago, about how if if you don't – Bring the ball. If you don't advance the ball, then they can't double team. I'll give Kobe the ball in the backcourt and then let him do the thing. Yeah, and and then they can find their spot and they can find, like this isn't Tyron Lue didn't come up with this play yesterday. That's for sure. Whether it was his call or LeBron's call, and LeBron can go end to end in five seconds, let alone eight seconds. Sure. So, well, let's get into the whole. And I know everybody. I like. I've got a lot of feedback on social media as always. But we, but I but there's some things that I personally want to say. Um, but let's even talk before we go. Let's talk about like I think the Warriors are a great example, and even that series in general. Like Alvin Gentry, the, the you know where he stands as a coach is sort of like I don't know. We'll see. He's certainly gotten a lot out of this Pelicans team. Yeah. He's certainly gone farther than a lot of people thought this Pelicans team would go, and he did it after Boogie got hurt. Now. You look at the Western Conference now, it's basically the Mike D'Antoni coaching tree and Quinn Snyder. But um, Steve Kerr, I think, is in between sort of the, oh, you know, the Tyron Lewis were kind of lost and the Brad Stevens, Mike D'Antoni, where you're like, holy shit, how's he come up with it? But a great example, like they have the best players and Steve Kerr is handling them in a great way. The way Kevin Durant is coming off of fucking pin downs, like the idea that you're getting your best scorer 
great looks the way that they you know he perfectly used Steph like hey we don't we're not gonna go to him too early we're not desperate to have him back even the way in the game today and honestly the Warriors have taken the flop and the bitching about calls to a new level and like the 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 barking at the rest but Draymond got a technical and then Steve Kerr's high-fiving him when he comes over like he is handling the egos and he's handling the personalities in in a fantastic way. It's a great example of a guy who's like, you've been given all the ammunition. Now just don't fuck it up. And he's a he's a player's coach. Yeah. He's a good he's he knows what he's doing. He's competent. He's not gonna fuck it up. And I mean, that's the NBA playoffs right now. Like if if you look at it like you have teams that have tons of talent. It goes from like the Warriors who have all of the talent in the world, like the most talent we've ever seen uh, in, in some regard on a basketball team down to, you know, the Boston Celtics who have two stars hurt and everything in between. And you got Mike D'Antoni who's in the middle is like, hey, we got a lot of talent, but also I'm a fucking really great coach. And we got Utah. It's like our talent's not quite up to par and our coach is like mm, pretty good, you know? And I think that's the range that's in the NBA right now. And that's why when I, when I watch the NBA, I try to factor in all that, that stuff because these people that just like look at records or titles or, you know, who your leading score is it's like, that's guys, that's not taking all of the information and processing it. Yeah. Well, let's talk about Philly for a minute too. Just too young, in my opinion. All the just, ta- just oh, yeah. Yeah, like we're talking about talent, all kinds of talent, tons su- of talent. Super young, just not ready for the moment. Yeah, super young. Their coach, their coach is super inexperienced as well. And and I think we all knew game two they had that big lead. Yep, that massive lead. I believe they were up by nineteen points or something. You know, and this is in Boston, about six minutes to go. And and by halftime, that lead's under but, ten. But again. Boston's younger than Philly. That's true. So that is that. that well, that's that's again, coaching. I was gonna say again. That shows yeah. exactly how great a coach Brad Stevens now, is. Now they're all, they're younger, but they're also like you know no one was saying uh, Jason Tatum's like the fucking God's gift to basketball. That whereas the Sixers, Ben Simmons was anointed, and Bede has been anointed. Yeah, you have these guys who have this like raw talent, and you're trying to figure out like. It's it's just like a little bit more of a, a basic style of like uh, Jason Tatum is great and he's also he also plays the game like fantastically uh, well at, from a uh, fundamental standpoint. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Whereas Simmons is like he doesn't have a jump shot at all. He's a great passer, but he's six nine. It's like not only are they young, but they're like raw. They're sure. young and raw, and their coach isn't that good. And what's his story, by the way? I don't know much about him. I don't either. I know he replaced uh, fucking I forget the last dude now. And then and then Dan Tony was on his bench, so he's smart enough to do that. He's on his bench the the year before he went to the Rockets, and he's just a process guy. You know, he's like he's been tasked with taking this team and turning them into. Veterans, even though they're like super young, yeah, super young squad. Gotcha. I forget the guy that they fucking tossed. Trevor, do you have their last coach? He was well. He was the North Melbourne Giants head coach, which was an Australian league. Yep, it's Australian league. He was there for five years. Why am I might blanking on their on the. <clears throat> then he was part coach. of he was part of the Spurs for a year, but right. his basketball ops. I don't know what that means. Then he was the Sydney Kings head coach for two years. Then he I might. <laughs> What's with all this Aussie shit? I love then it. He was the San Antonio Spurs director of player development assistant from 2002 to 2013. Then he's been the Sixers head coach from 2013. Doug Collins now. was before them. Who was? Doug Collins. Was right before Brown? Yeah. Wow. Doug Collins was 2010 to 2013. All right. Crazy. Forgot yeah. about that. Oh, good old Doug Collins. I don't even think he does play by play anymore. No. I liked him doing I liked him uh doing in the broadcast. Business. He's good. He's a good yeah. broadcaster. Um, but let's get to let's get to your boy. I guess my boy now too, LeBron. But before we do that, Prano, uh what's the deal with us and you too? 
I was, I was looking when, on when, C- when is the show? I think it's May 16th. I was looking on SeatGeek again, man. Hold on, let me look. C- can you look up your schedule? I'm I'm here. Well, I was looking on SeatGeek again because they will be at the forum. I'm also using SeatGeek this week to go see my Cincinnati Reds probably lose by 400 runs uh, to the Dyers, the Doyers. Four games this week. Uh, so dirt balls. We, we've gotten some great. First, first we got Mets, uh, Mets, Reds, and Cincy. Then the then the Reds come out here. Oh, it's like a Seat Geek Bonanza. Yeah. So dirt Bonanza. So dirt balls. Bo knows Nanza. <laughs> if you want to take advantage of that great offer that we have with Seat Geek, you should just download the app right now because I see guys tweeting at us all the time the tickets that they use yeah. from Seat Geek, which is. The only spot that we use, uh, or that we get our tickets from, I should say. I can't wait. Let's let's definitely use Seeky. Can go. Let's go to the forum, bro. Cool. I haven't been to the new forum. I haven't either. I can't wait. Best of all, all you guys get twenty dollars off your first Seeky purchase. Just download the Seeky app and enter our promo code Dirty today. That's D I R T Y, and Seeky will send you twenty dollars off your first purchase. That's promo code DIRTY for $20 off your first purchase. And I did have a question recently about it. Again, it's in the settings tab. Yeah. Just click enter promo and, and code. They, and they, they send you. They send you cash back. They like yes. they they uh, refund you on PayPal, whatever you I know. I've gotten a lot of that too. But trust the process. <laughs> yeah. Thus the process. Thus, thus with, the SeatGeek With process. our friends at SeatGeek. Yeah. All right. So we got to talk about LeBron because it's crazy doing an episode – because we usually record on Wednesday and Sunday, Joe. Yeah. And it's like so much has happened yep. just with the Cavs and LeBron since we recorded last. Mm-hmm. Two games. Yep. And those two games were two unreal games. Yeah. I mean, obviously, the big the big moment was last night, his his game winner. The, the running, one-hand game winner. But LeBron, that's just... That's just like, like I said the last time he did it. I don't even worry anymore that he's yeah. not going to get it done. I'm like, and people go, oh, it's actually no, it's not really that clutch if you're not down. I go, yeah, no shit. LeBron knows if I make this shot, we win the game. Yeah, and if I don't make this shot, I dominate you in overtime because there was a point in that game yesterday when he flipped a switch. Yeah, and he just took over and now you know the the criticism of lebron the criticism in the past of the uh, he doesn't have the killer instinct and he doesn't have and he doesn't want the ball it's that's it's long gone i don't know if he's heard it i don't know if he doesn't trust the guys on his team now i don't know what but like that's not a thing anymore yeah he takes games over 100 percent, and he's been doing it for a while now yeah, the idea that he shrinks is so is so antiquated. Like you're going back to fucking 2011. He's but, made every final since then. It's so funny because today was interesting with Le- with LeBron because a few things happened that I didn't think I'd ever see. One, my brother texted me, my one who's my one brother Greg who's above me, you know. Team Jordan all the way, yeah. always. Not a big NBA guy, I'll be honest. Right. But he texted me, and he's like, dude, I, I just don't think I can do that anymore. And, and again, a, a casual NBA fan, yeah. and, he, he's like, and he basically said what you just said. He's like, you know, I thought he might be scared of the moment years ago and when he's hit certain years with the heat, but he's like, dude, it's just what he's doing, you just, I, I just don't know how you can't. You know, and I know some of you guys are sick of hearing this, but I don't know how you can't say he's the best. And then, and then you text me today, and you're like, "Dude, did you see Michael Rappaport's tweet?" Yeah, and again, fantastic. Again, again, another guy. Finally, again, another guy who just is saying, "Look." Well, what I like, what I like, especially about a guy like Rappaport, and uh, and even yourself, honestly, uh, I know, like, look, we do it. You've had to listen to me do it for two hours twice a week. For as long as we've been doing it. So, I mean, you have you have 800 hours of this under your belt. You know what I mean? Like, I'm going to break a motherfucker down with 800 hours. But th- these got like, a Rappaport, and, and what I like about him and what I like about some of these people that are finally seeing it is 
that's when I trust a person's basketball opinion. Like when I was watching Rappaport like dismiss him in the last few years and and carry the the broom to Cleveland and he's sweep and he's a fake and the skinny genification in the NBA. I'm like, you're either a hater or trolling. You're trolling. You're doing this for you know to blow up your thing and to have an angle. Or you just like don't get it, and you're a guy who was watching in the '90s and loved the '90s and bought into the whole thing. And the great and the thing is, is like there's nothing wrong with thinking that Michael Jordan once was the best player in the history of basketball. Yeah, but it's a, it's a it's wrong to hold on to that when all of the information is pointing you in another direction. Yeah, and you did that, and that's why I wanted to say because you were saying before the show. Like, I don't know how to handle this. I don't know. And so here's what I was thinking we should do. As sort of like a, as like the sort of the royal you, like you sort of speak for the fan base of all these people who should eventually come around. I feel like you should wear the L chain. No, see, this this is what because, I don't like about you, And I'll you, tell Joe. you why. This, I'll tell you why no, you should is, wear the L chain. Because go ahead. Go ahead. you... And I actually went back and I listened to old episodes. You were a guy who did things like said, yeah, but Michael Jordan had that killer instinct okay. and like the competitive fire. And I said, and I listened to it, I heard myself say, you bought in, you're, you're, you're believing in ghosts. You bought into this marketing scheme that was Michael Jordan is the greatest and nothing will ever be greater than Michael Jordan. And the NBA on NBC wanted that to happen. They, they, it was so, they were so desperate for people to buy in the way so many people did. But then people just started saying it for you. You just started saying it, and now you're you've come around, and now you're realizing how dumb it is that people have that ever say the well, killer instinct well, and the competitive well, well, fire on, and no on. one ever. He, so that's no, why no, I think no, no, here's you my, should almost wear this I, as as a way to say, look, I'm doing it for all of you out there. Everybody out there who's still making this stupid argument, I'm doing it. Take a note out of the Andy Ruther page out of my playbook and wear the L chain because you're wrong. Well, no, this is this is this is where I don't want to go with this conversation. I'll be honest. This isn't a matter of being right or wrong. It is. But hold on, hold on. It, in me, fact, it is. Let, let me just no. Let me say. Let me say my fucking spiel because I've thought long and hard about this. Actually, I really have. And I've been doing a lot of social media, my appreciation of what LeBron's doing. You can go back in old episodes for sure. I was Team Kobe. I was Team Jordan. All had a, all had a Team LeBron. Like, like Joe said, this is our 414th episode. But I also think I'm good about evolving my opinion on things. Right. Whether it's sports, politics, relationships, you name it. I, I think I'm I, I think I have good self awareness. I have a lot of bad things, but I have good self awareness. And I've seen what he's done as quote unquote evidence. And even if you go back to an old dirty sports episode, what he's consistently done in the last three to four years on top of what he had already done prior to that. Right. But hold on. My point is to me, it doesn't matter if someone can say, oh, they think Michael's the best, blah, blah, blah. Let them, let them think that. That's fine because they're not going to change their mind. But I'm just trying to appreciate the moment and seeing the things that I'm seeing. And again, in someone's 15th season when the game's never been better, and, and you made a great point, which I basically tweeted out again. I, I You've said this before on the show, and I think this is such a good point, that people should really take this in, is that... Every sport, the athletes are better. It doesn't matter if it's an Olympic sport, if it's one of the big three, football, basketball, baseball. The athletes are better now than they were 10, 15, 20 years ago. That's just a fact. But for some reason— we what, have- Basically what's happening, like, I, and I, I talked about this before, and I'm going to say it again, okay? You, if, you look at the, if you look at the guy who won the 100-meter dash in the Olympics in 1980— Carl Lewis. Okay, let's say it's Carl Lewis yeah, in 1980, say. and he does it in nine and a half seconds, okay? He won the gold. He was the greatest of all time at that. He set a record. He had the world record. The guy who took the bronze this year ran it faster than Carl Lewis. So for you to say, you're, what you're out there doing if you're a Michael Jordan fan is you're saying Carl Lewis is a better runner than that guy because he won gold and this guy won bronze. It's not true. There, it's right there. The times are right there. He ran it faster. He is better. 
He's better at running than Carl Lewis was. Was he better as compared to his peers and blah, 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 all the fucking loopholes and the, you know, the, the, the fine print and the, you know, all the shit that you want to write to, to create this instance that makes you seem or feel like you're right. It's not right. You're not right. The guy who took fifth at the Olympics is faster than Carl Lewis ever was winning gold because that's how it works. It's better. It gets better, and the best now is the best ever. That's it. That's it. That's the answer. And I said, and this is what fucking pisses me off, and this is why you should wear the L chain, by the way, because because I said from the fucking day one, go back to day one, he's a better shooter. He's a better passer. This isn't with finals appearances. This isn't with this shot he made yesterday, the shot he made in round one. He's a better shooter. He's a better passer. He's a better rebounder. He's a more versatile defender. He has more longevity. He's, it's everything. It's all right there. It's not a question. There is no question. And you're hanging on. You're wrong. It's wrong. It's just wrong. You're saying that Carl Lewis is somehow faster than a guy he's not as fast as. Yeah. That's what you're doing. Well, he won the gold. Did he? Did he win the gold? He won like eight golds. He won eight golds. Eight, eight races? Eight golds. Eight no. Eight, eight races, eight golds. He's, there's is a time, and it's very simple. Yeah. That's who's faster. It's not hard. People got to give it the fuck up. And I've been telling you this for five years. Yeah, but again, Joe, to me, it's not about he was a better s- shooter then. He was a better passer then. He was but, a better rebounder then. But, but he's then. also added five years of showing he can do that. That's all I'm saying. Yeah. So you have now seen enough evidence, but the proof was always there. You just needed more evidence to understand it. But I, what, what are you telling me, that I saw the future? This is what I'm saying. Is that I was right all along. That's no, what you should see, be see, this is what you want to hear. This whole I'm right, you're wrong. I, I, I don't want to get into that. Cause you th- don't have to be wrong, but just tell me I'm right because I am right and I have been right. No, see, see, this is this is not this is not. The and game you I and play. Yoshi were here, and you're telling me no one will ever top Michael Jordan and the Killer Instinct, and now you are getting angry at you. No, this is what I'm on getting, the internet. This is what I'm getting angry at on the internet. I'm getting and, and I shouldn't. And by the way, this shows that I'm very weak-minded in this area, and I need to improve on it. It's, it's because I'm letting idiots get to me, and, and the truth is I shouldn't. You shouldn't. In fact, we have this great show. We're lucky. We are. We're so lucky that we have a fun podcast. We have people who listen and that we get to explain our viewpoint. We're fortunate, and we, we shouldn't give a shit. But I you sh- know what? Here's the thing, and I told you, I do give a shit. You know my name on Twitter is? Fix your life. I fixed your life, Andy. <laughs> I fixed your life. And maybe I, ego on and this maybe guy. I had a small part in fixing Michael Rappaport's life. And maybe, you know, uh, fucking, uh, what's his name? Uh, Al, Alex Miller, fucking down in uh, A. Millie, a down, Millie. In, down in fucking Louisiana. He told me, hey, dude, you fixed my life. You made me see Jordan is the best, or you made me see that LeBron is the best, and I totally get it now, and you're right, and I've done it. Yeah, and but hold it's on, important. Joe. It's important. You know, who, you know who made all of us see LeBron, or at least me, you know who made me see LeBron as the best? LeBron did. Well, yeah. No offense to you. It wasn't you. It was LeBron doing what LeBron does. Right. And and I think we need to just accept the stupidity in people. And I get that you're trying to fix their life. But it's not about you trying to fix their life. Let's be honest. It's about you saying, I'm right, you're But see, wrong. I think it is. I think That's it's, what it is I, for you. No, it's no. A, it's an ego thing. No, I disagree. I actually want – It's it's. I think it is important. I want – See, somebody said it to me the other day. They're like, oh, if it weren't for fucking Twitter now, no one would be on the LeBron. Twitter's done this thing where they, like, hoist this guy up. I go, are you stupid? That's the complete opposite of what actually happened. Now you can create your own feed of information. If you're a Kobe slurper, you can follow only fucking – cartoon frogs in Kobe jerseys and you can actually convince yourself through your choice of information that Kobe Bryant who's not even in either of these guys classes whatsoever is better than them you can do that whereas in the 90s mass media the capitalist society of America forced people to believe it Gatorade 
Hanes, Nike, McDonald's, NBC, Warner Brothers. You didn't have a choice. You didn't have a choice. If you wanted to watch the NBA, you couldn't go on Twitter and get information during timeouts. You had to watch, I want to be like Mike. And everybody fucking bought in. And my point is, is like, we now are a place that people choose because now you don't just have to listen to talk radio. If you're in L.A., you don't have to listen to the fucking shit bag that's on ESPN radio going like, actually, Kobe is the best. If you're in Chicago, you don't have to. You could be somebody that listens to us anywhere in the world, Australia, fucking Norway, all the places that people tell us they're from. And we're telling them and we're teaching them that this is the right answer. And honestly, that's why I think it's important that you put on the L chain I'm not for being the wrong chain. about your opinion and I, me being right and say I am wrong. And everybody out there should see that but me again, as the person here, I'm, I'm going to do it for everybody. This is a symbolic L chain. It's almost like you're wearing L chains for Jordan slippers everywhere. Hold on. I want to get the interns in on this because I want to get their input because they're younger cats. And obviously, they didn't grow up watching Jordan progress just like how we've grown up watching Le- LeBron progress what do you guys think of all this like what do you think about what you're witnessing and what do you think of him saying I should wear the L chain when all I'm saying is I'm evolving and seeing some guy evolve in his own profession the one the one thing I will say is that I was a big Jordan guy growing up like I was somewhat old enough I remember the tail end I was able to see it I remember like when he retired the the last time and I remember crying like before I went to like first grade class it was a big deal so I grew up like a Jordan guy but over time it became like a LeBron guy um I don't know I think it goes I think it goes both ways when it comes to the L chain I think I mean yeah he was saying it all along and you were a Jordan guy but at the same and time, a Kobe guy and, and a Kobe guy but at the same time like you become a LeBron guy like but you, it's not even evolved it, but like, it's not evolved. even about becoming a LeBron guy it's about it's about learning I'm not even worried about you I'm like the my I, problem my issue I with appreciate it, for what Jordan did I yeah. appreciate what Kobe did it, my, my point is you can appreciate different things at different periods totally. of your life but my issue is like because I went back and I started listening is like hearing you say like hearing hearing me do what I, I do. I love that Joe went Hold back on. and listened. Hear, hearing what I do, which is like I tell you, like look at his game, look what he's done, look how he elevates his players, look how his teams when he leaves, his teams gets worse, and when he arrives, his teams gets better. And Jordan did this, and he leaves, and they're only two wins worse. And look at the coaching difference, and look at just like the overall stats and all that. And and I listen. It was an episode with you and Yoshi. You titled it "Michael Jordan is Overrated" because I said that, and you were like. You like wanted to jump out the window, which you, which I still think is absurd to which, say which, such a fucking fact like that. And you said, you like I I got you into a corner with too many facts, and you're like, but the the competitive spirit, the killer instinct. I just don't know if that's some. And I'm just like, this is like you were at a pla- you were these people that are replying to your video and you're replying to your tweets, and you've come out of it. You've come out of it. I'm not saying you should wear the L chain because you were wrong. I'm saying it should be a symbolic for all these people that can't come out of it. Be like, I was you, and I'm taking the L. But I'm, and but, you but guys again, need to take the L. I, I feel like it's a broken record. It's not about taking an L, Brent. It's about evolving your opinion, your opinion on things. Like, let me put it this way. I might – my opinion has greatly evolved throughout my life. So let me on, ask you a question. Hold on, hold on. My, my opinion has greatly evolved in my, in, my, in my life on something like the environment. Like, I didn't give a shit about the environment 20 years ago. Now, I'm the type of guy who, like, Refuses I— Refuses to recycle still. Well, no. I, <laughs> yeah, I don't recycle, but— That's, <laughs> like, literally— Ba- step one, base like how little do you care about the environment, but just seem like you well, I care. have weird conspiracies about that. I think a lot of it's a farce. <laughs> okay, I think you know if I put in the recycling bin down in Savage Town, is it really going to recycling bin? No, but my <laughs> point is, I'm the type of person now. If I see someone litter on the street, I'll literally say something to them. Like that bothers me. I I genuinely hate. When I see litter on the beach, when I see people who don't give a You're shit. You're like, pick that up and honestly put it in any can you want. I don't really yeah. care. <laughs> but my point is I've evolved on that. I care more about the environment, more about our planet. Just like I've evolved on LeBron. So, again, to you, it's it, to me it's not a, a clear-cut L or no L. But let me ask you a question because this is – I, I want to play devil's advocate because I feel like – 
again, you were these people, and now you've come out of it. You've seen the light. LeBron has shown a lot of people the light lately, and he's done it like – to me, what, what I laugh at is I love it because people can't – like more and more people can't deny it because those those shots are big splashy things. Everybody's like, "Holy shit, that was amazing. Like how did he do that?" But like if he doesn't make that shot, he still had a fucking only a game that LeBron James can have. So let me ask you something. Like does LeBron's legacy is it negatively affected if he goes to if he takes his team to the finals and loses? Cuz then it's 3 and 6 in finals. For me, no. Right. Of course, but my point is that's where, and that's the same reason. Like Tom Brady, you know, for me, it doesn't matter that he has three losses in the Super Bowl. Tom Brady's been to eight Super Bowls. Right, I understand that. I understand where you're coming from. And again, that's like, first of all, compl- like it's apples and oranges. Well, okay, agree to disagree. Okay, we yeah, we will agree <laughs> to disagree because to me, Aaron Rodgers is the LeBron James of the NFL. Okay. Okay, he's had a shitty coach. He's had a fucking shitty system. He's he's still the best statistically. Okay. He still does things other people can't do, but he's only got one, so people he's not even in the conversation for some people. And it's like and that's what I said before when we talked about this in the past. I said when Brett was here, I said, if Aaron Rodgers finishes with three, he's the best ever. I don't care that he didn't get five like Brady or four like Montana. Because he's shown me that he physically does it better than anybody else. Gotcha. And so I'm not going to put handcuffs on him and say, now you have to achieve this benchmark of team success yeah. for me to say that you're better than Terry Bradshaw. Yeah. That's just not how it works. If LeBron James was on the fucking Spurs, he'd have 12. <laughs> like, it's not that, and we can play ifs, ands, or buts about it all the time, but like, Look at how it happened. That's everything we talked about in the playoffs today. If LeBron James was on the Boston Celtics right now with this team, it's not close. There is there no one touches them because then they have the best coach, then they have the best player. That was Michael Jordan in his time. He didn't win when Bird and Magic were peaking. And when he had Doug Collins. Yeah. He didn't win when Bird and Magic were peaking. After Michael Jordan won. No more bird, no more magic. He just like ended their careers. He ended the bad boys Pistons. No, those teams had their run. They owned the eighties. If there was no magic bird has 10 titles. If there's no bird magic has 10 titles. Look at what those two teams went back and forth when there was fucking no lottery and free agency was holding a different thing. And these two powerhouses are going at each other. And now suddenly Michael Jordan's better than them because they had to play against each other and he had to play against Kemp, Barkley, Malone. Like, notice that he didn't have the same team that he's meeting there over and over and over again in the finals. It wasn't Bulls Rockets every year. It wasn't Bulls Utah every year. It wasn't them owning the 90s. He was the peak in the 90s. He was the best player by far. No one's taking that away from him. But that isn't a benefit to Michael Jordan that – he, the era before him had two superstar teams with two great players on it, th- some like eight Hall of Famers between the two teams, and then you go to the NBA where everybody's got one Hall of Famer except for the Bulls who have two, and they're just like fucking going for it. It's like it's it's not hard at this point. That's why symbolically, stop it with the L chain. You should wear it for all of those people, and you should see you should be like guys, wear it with me. Come, come down, cross the bridge to cross over to the light you've seen it you there i take the l on saying shit like competitive nature and like fire and like you know killer instinct well those are all still things jordan still had again lebron has that right yeah, i'm not disagreeing with right that. so ever bringing that up ever bringing that up as a comparison of the two that lebron didn't have it and those guys did so factually incorrect and offensive that's why you should wear the l chain no i'm not wearing the l chain i'm just not I'm not, I'm not wearing the L chain for things I said three years ago. I, I, I may, I, again. Well, then we're going to have to get a W chain because somebody deserves a chain here. <laughs> EJ, what do you think about all this? Um, so <clears throat> I actually like, you know, watching basketball, like growing up, it was always, yeah, Jordan, obviously. And then when LeBron went to Miami, that was like, you know, I was in high school and I was like, oh, dude, you know, he's the worst. Like, we he's all such hated a villain. him. Yeah. yeah. And it was like, I, I, 
always said like, no, screw him, like whatever. Yeah, he's good, but you know, he went to Miami. As the years have gone on, especially I think it was last year, I can say is like the first real time that I was just, I would watch what he would do. And it, it's, it really is unbelievable, like what this guy does on the court a- at his age and how, how long he's been playing the game, how many playoffs that he, games that he's played. Like, yeah. it's unbelievable. And then, and I, and I totally am not like saying like, oh, you know, he's number one better than Jordan. Like, it, there, there are arguments to be made on both sides, but it's one thing to say that he's doing this, LeBron's doing this in his 15th season, and he... But very easily, the way he takes care of his body, he could do this for five more years. Like, honestly. And, like, that's unbelievable. 20 years of absolute pure yeah, this dominance. Isn't, this isn't LeBron James' last That's hurrah. Yeah, that's why, to me, he, he, that there's a very good chance that by the end of LeBron's career, everyone can unanimously say that, like, he will be the greatest full-time because he still has so much time. And he's, like, like he's already at the peak, and, you know, he's going to keep going. He's That's not, what I mean, knock on wood, you know. Yeah. Injuries happen. Injuries happen to Kobe. Injuries happen to, you know, uh, uh, all of the greats. You know, eventually came in Bird, uh, Magic uh, in some sense. Like, everybody. That HIV injury yeah. bug. I <laughs> but, hate when that one hits. Yeah. But, uh, like, you man, know, I got that HIV in bug some today. Sense, you know, something takes everybody. But there's no sign. I mean, LeBron James at 33, he didn't, he wasn't like part of that game and then hit the game winner because he's their star still. He dominates the game. Well, I just want to say this to anybody who is listening and and wants to bring up the 80s and 90s. I I just want to kind of put the nail in the coffin on this. For everyone who says, oh, LeBron, if he had to deal with the bad boy. It's always the bad boy's Pistons, which I love. If he had to deal with the bad boy's Pistons, he'd be Which he wouldn't ever have to deal with because... Bill Lambier would get laughed out of an NBA tryout right now. They'd yeah. be like, you don't belong here. You're I fa- don't know what you're doing here <laughs> or how you got past security in the first place. You have absolutely no athletic ability. You have no outside shot whatsoever. What are you doing here? Is this some sort of adult make-a-wish? They'd be like, hey, man, the curling tryouts, they're over there. <laughs> like, you're not, don't come here. Chris Porzingis would be standing next to him, seven inches taller, banging threes. And he'd be like, how do you... How do you get so much air under it? Like, well, well, what I wanted to say was this. People, for some reason, never think the opposite way. They always say, LeBron's a bitch. He'd get, you know, touched, he'd flop, and he'd be a pussy. Well, he wouldn't because we've never had a physical specimen like LeBron. So if you took LeBron's body and you put him in the 1988 season, he'd be doing the same things back to guys twice that are two times smaller than him. Right. So the argument is that that argument just doesn't make sense. Also, it's like the, these people that argued like, oh, he never would have lasted. It's like, I don't know. Mark Price seemed to last. Steve Kerr lasted. Yeah. Reggie Miller lasted. Like, is Steve Kerr some sort of like sick, like war hero where he was just like this six foot white dude with absolutely no muscle on his body, but he managed to survive just through perseverance like John Paxson like you don't know what that meant he was in Vietnam before he was in the NBA taking the beatings from the bad boys Pistons it's like it's it's a different fucking time and the game is uh you know, uh, let me put this refed way. differently. Let me put this way. There's it's, also no illegal defense. There's yeah. like, there's a million different fucking things. It's like saying, this is what I don't get. And by the way, this to me is, is across all sports. And I think everybody should really take this into consideration. It's like saying you'd rather have Dick Budkiss than Ray Lewis as yeah. your inside linebacker. It's a ludicrous statement to say you'd rather have Bill Lambeer than... Carl Anthony Towns, a guy who can post you up. It's and a ludicrous statement three. to say you'd rather have Bill Lambeer than anybody in the <laughs> NBA. Do you understand? He does not have the ability to play in today's NBA. That You can't do that. You couldn't show up and you're like, so what's your role exactly? You're like, I just knock dudes around. It's like, that's not going to work. Uh, like, you're going to get destroyed. Like, You'll, you won't be able way- to stop Anybody. Who would you call a bruiser who just does that? Because even – even to, let's take a Ben Wallace or even, even even a Dennis Rodman who aren't that long ago, especially Ben Wallace. You know, we're talking about in his prime, what, 10 years ago, 12 years ago? Who in today's NBA – is that type of guy? There is nobody who's that. That's not a thing that's, anymore. That's why I'm asking. You have no place here. Even if you're 
uh, even if you're some like defender specialist, like the Shane Battier. First of all, Shane Battier is a better defender than Michael Jordan ever dealt with in his entire career in the NBA. Ron Artest is a better defender than Michael Jordan dealt with in his entire career in the NBA. Shane Battier hits open threes. That's a good point. Ron Artest hits open threes. Bill Lambeer doesn't know what a three is. He didn't <laughs> learn it. There was never a point where they had to say, so this line represents a third point that you get. Because he's like, what the fuck am I What am I going to kick it? Do you drop it and kick it? Do, you, do I throw it? Is there some sort of javelin style attempt that you can do? Is there some sort of, can I, can I throw it to somebody and then they throw it in? But Prado, I am curious, like, from the from the psychological perspective, and and, I'm, and I and I want to talk about this for a second. Why do we think it's kind of? I know you don't watch South Park anymore, but I really love their member berries and their whole thing, which which was knocking the nostalgia of movies, yeah, you know, and TV shows. And you see it all the time in Hollywood, right, with the reboots of the '80s and the '90s. And you say, well, guys. Can we come up with, if, with new creative content? This town's full of creative people. As we both jerk off over Cobra Kai. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, but 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 even even Cobra Kai, which by the way, phenomenal show. Yeah, go watch. Uh, Red Earth has some great liners. Yeah, yeah. I'm I'm six episodes deep. Anyway, why do we have this with just the NBA? It's not just the NBA. It has nothing to do with the NBA. Then what is it? It's Michael Jeffrey. Jordan, he is, through being a fantastic basketball player, formerly the greatest basketball player of all time, and a gigantic marketing scheme, was a well, unique— I wouldn't call it a scheme. I would call it brilliant marketing. Okay, fine. But it was, a, it was, all, it was all those things at once. It was perfect yeah. timing. It was perfect timing. When, when, when Bird and Magic basically saved the NBA and put it on the map, and made people watch it. Yeah. Two major cities on two opposite coasts, a rivalry across a decade, people care. Then one man for the next decade, when the NBA was like, we have to go worldwide, when the NBA was like, we have to sell ourselves as TV, we have to sell our players, we have to put a face on it, they weren't selling Sean Kemp and his 40 kids. They weren't Shut up. they weren't selling John Stockton's fucking side part. They weren't selling fucking, you know, Bill Lambeer's, I don't know, dad bod, you know? <laughs> they were selling Michael Jordan. So there's a unanimous feeling from every single person of an era that this guy is untouchable. Yes. And now, so when you have everybody on board, when you have everybody in agreement, there's going to be some people that hang on to that so tightly that the, there's nothing that you can do to to let to get them to let go of it. There's nothing that you can do to go, but here's why. And it's like, no, no, no. Those are the people that just lock up and they go, no, no. And then they create things. They create false information to try to defend their ludicrous beliefs. And one of those false informations is like, it was harder. I'm like, well, no, that's not. That's not actually. It was. It was harder. Try playing against Craig Elo. What do you think, Michael? What do you think LeBron James would do against Craig Elo? It's like, yeah. Stop picking like random other greats. That were, oh, Michael couldn't beat Larry because he was so fucking great and he couldn't beat the Bad Boys Pistons. Awesome. Those two teams that that existed for fucking you know however many years. What about all the teams that Michael Jordan did beat to be Craig Elo? That's who he made that shot over. Remember the great, the fucking, before there was the Byron Russell shot, that was the shot. Craig Elo was guarding Michael Jordan. He hit a great mullet, In too. a playoff game. Craig Elo. When I think of Craig, like, Michael Jordan thinks of Craig Elo the way I think of Trevor when we're going to go out. I'm like, what, what is this guy doing here? What is he doing here? He has no business guarding me. He has... Trevor knows he has no business guarding me. That's not going to be what it is. <laughs> Michael Jordan knew Craig Elo had no business guarding him. What is Craig? You're going to argue that in an NBA playoff game, when Michael Jordan was being guarded by Craig Elo, it was harder than it is now? Who was guarding LeBron yesterday, by the way? They had they were they had a, a Zbuki or whatever the yeah, fuck his name is. Yeah, it was that guy. On the last shot? Yeah. Yeah, is it OG Agumbi or something like that? You know what I'm talking about? Not going to work here anymore, that's for sure. <laughs> well, he's looking it up. Well, I don't think we can pronounce this, so it's it's all good. Ookie Kabuki. 
Loved him in Pirates of the Caribbean. Or the, uh... <laughs> you know what I meant. The, the I know. I know. <laughs> I'll put the L chain on for that. I'll put the L that, chain on. You're putting for that. the L chain on? Like you did like you did that for two hundred episodes? Yes. I'll put the L chain on for that. I meant to say that Tom Hanks pirate movie, which I still can't even remember. Pirates of Somalia? <laughs> What's it called? <laughs> Captain Phillips? <laughs> Trevor, I blame you on all this shit, man. You have me smoking weed and shit, and look what happens. You haven't even smoked any weed. What are you talking about? I haven't about? smoked Trevor's any weed. smoking hash over there, and you're he's on his game. Pirates of the Caribbean? That, that's a movie. Dear God. It, it was OG and a newbie. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Prano, man. I could go I could go I could go down this for a while, but I know, and we do it, and I don't need to do it every episode. That's the thing. I know people think that we're beating a dead horse, but the you know, we the reason that it always comes up and it's it's something that just exists on the internet. But we've said it before. We'll say it again. Like, it doesn't just exist on the internet. It exists on sports radio. It exists everywhere. Bars. Yeah, yeah, for sure. But anywhere it's like, you want to discuss. It's just, and it, we're going to go on Punch Drunk. We're going to do it all over again. But, like, the the thing is, is, like, it's just, it's 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 not, it's not even, like, a discussion. It's really over. And it's been over. I think it's been over for a really long time. Some people think it's over more recently. But, guys... It's definitely over. It's definitely, definitely over. You're on the wrong side here. You're arguing a guy who runs an 11 second 100 yard dash in 1935 and wins gold with nobody else running against him is faster than fucking is is a is a better runner than Usain Bolt. It's almost like not understanding that you know, maybe 100 years ago the average life expectancy for the American was 50 years old. Like, we've improved our health, right? We've gotten better. We've lived longer. We understand nutrition better. We understand diet better. And that's, and, and just uh, like total. athletes yeah. have now improved. It, it's this weird disconnect. Totally. Of, and, and, if, and if anybody's argument is ever if Michael Jordan had the technology. The recovery, all the things that LeBron James had, maybe he would have been better than LeBron James. Well, we can play that fantasy game all the time. Yeah, and if my aunt had a cock, she'd be my uncle. We can do that. You know what I mean? Which but, in 2018, gender, right. gender fluid. But my point is, if that's your, if that's what you want to bring, if you want to bring, if he, if he had all that LeBron has access to, and the killer instinct. <laughs> And wasn't a degenerate gambling addict and instead was like working only on recovery. What's amazed me about our, our latest YouTube video that's getting so much traction about this is that the amount of people unaware of the theory that Jordan's dad was whacked over gambling, whether it was, and I'm just going to go on record and say this, we don't know for sure whether it was over Michael Jordan's gambling uh, I've done a lot of research on this over the last day. There's also a big theory that his, it, da his dad also yes, had gambling issues. That his dad yeah. had a gambling issue. And it could, but the point is this. If you honestly think, I'm going to look at the camera on this one. If you honestly think that Michael Jordan, in the prime of his career, he had just won three straight titles. If you honestly think he retired out of nowhere to pursue baseball, you're delusional. Also, there, there is definitely a gambling connection or the NBA right, a suspension. I don't know how this my is. My favorite part, though, is, okay, fine. He quit because he wanted to pursue baseball. It's bullshit. Then, but no, I'm okay with that. Now take your most competitive athlete ever theory and light it on fire because he voluntarily walked away multiple times from the sport yeah there goes your fucking most difficult compet trevor is sitting here going like it's not on it's not over like we're gonna fucking give you like trevor isn't just going like i'm you know what let's let's all compete in baseball let's see how you guys let's see if you can hit my no he's like let's fucking go we'll figure it out that's what a competitor does a competitor doesn't go like, um, fucking, uh, no. You have it for a couple of years. 
You take it. It'd be like John Wooden retiring after a couple titles. It'd be like fucking anything. It'd be like what? Yeah. It'd be like, you know what? I think we've proven everything we need to prove at the Dirty Sports. I think our uh, iTunes ratings speak for themselves. I'm out. Like, yeah. That's not how it works. Yeah. It's a good gift right there. Prano. That's all we can say about this situation. It's a good discussion. Again, I, I am very interested in the... You know the the psychological side of how people think and feel, and, and I think I'm starting to understand it better. I feel like you should have like I want to have a psycho like a psych- psychiatrist on to you know how, you know somebody. how like you know how the people that run like AA meetings or like run recovery programs yes. are always like former addicts. Like, yes, I think you should do that for like like I think you need like a you need to be like I was once you. I know what it's like to be you. I know what it's like to regurgitate stupid things that like Marv Albert told you in pregame shows in the nineties, but I was wrong and you are wrong and let's be wrong together. And let's, let me help you realize why you're wrong. You gotta love Joe. That's the silver lining. You, and you know, what you is get, this, I'm right. You're wrong. I'm right. You're wrong. It, but that's the silver you know lining the chip they give for alcoholics, like a little, like the yeah. ear chip. You could get little L chips that you get hand to people. You like, I wear the chain for all of us, but you have an L like an L button or something, an L pin. You can wear it on your lapel. <laughs> and you know what we can do at those meetings? <laughs> we could give out Harry's razor blades if they complete a six-week course. Yeah, so that you can you can keep a nice tight beard like LeBron has, or you can keep the nice shaved head that Jordan had, or you can use that sharp fifth blade and kill yourself if you still think Michael Jordan's the greatest player of all time. <laughs> Definitely not putting that when I give him the ad read. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Uh, your mustache is looking good, though. I know you've been using Harry's to keep it I nice have. and clean. I, 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 I'm, uh, that fifth plate is so important for me. I use the, the four for the sides, and then that fifth on the top of the mustache, the bottom of the mustache, keep that shit tight. What I love about Harry's is not only is it a great product, the, the five blades are great, the shaving gel is great, it's an affordable price, Prano. Yeah, absolutely. And I think that's important because a lot of people – you know, complain. You hear it all the time. Oh, I'm spending too much on my razor blades. I'm spending too much. Not Harry's, guys. It's it's so good. If you don't love their shave, within 30 days, you get a full refund. I think so it's they're, fantastic. They're putting their money where their mouth is, 100%. Right now, all the Dirt Balls can get a $13 value trial set that comes with everything you need for a close, comfortable shave. That includes the weighted ergonomic handle, five-blade razor with a lubricating strip and trimmer blade, rich lathering shave gel, a travel blade cover, all those great things. So Dirt Balls, you can redeem their trial set at harrys.com forward slash dirty. Make sure you go to harrys.com forward slash dirty to redeem your offer and let them know I sent you to support the show. I'm going to take off this L chain, which I wore for saying Pirates of the Caribbean. For the record, we got to talk about your Knicks for a quick second, though. Yeah, David Fisdale, love it, you guy. I am still a Knicks fan. They are still my Knicks. I'm not a Blazers fan. I'm not a whatever team LeBron James goes to next fan. I am a Knicks fan. This is the guy I wanted, and finally, the Knicks make a fucking right move now. Will it work out? Who knows? They're a goddamn dumpster fire of an organization. Dolan might run him out of town. Dolan might force him to hire Isaiah Thomas to be his fucking right-hand man or his assistant coach. There's so many things that could still go wrong here. But I like Fizdale. Uh, he's, he was an assistant coach with Spolstra. Um, he has he's, – he's worked under Riley, obviously, which even more so to me than uh, working with Spolstra. Him and Spolstra were video guys together. Um, then I believe he coached in college. Then he was an assistant with Spolstra. Then, of course, he was the head coach of the Grizzlies. He took the team that is now a the worst team in basketball and will probably have the number one overall pick to the playoffs last year. Why He's, was he fired? That was a bizarre firing. I think there's a, a number of different theories, and one of them is that he didn't want to tank. Like, he was, he was anti-tank. Ah. So they fired him for wanting to win. Uh, there's, there's talk that he didn't get along with Gasol, but I, that, that, yes, that, that's right. That seems, I don't know. seems suspect considering. 
I heard he wanted him to spell his name with a K, not a C. Marcus All? Yeah. Got it. That's an th- interesting theory. <laughs> Another. <laughs> <laughs> Man, my jokes tonight are just uh, not going well. I like Fizdale a lot. Uh, shout out to, once again, a, a podcast that has returned to the top of my favorites feed. Now that Michael Rappaport has seen the light, he did a great interview with Fizdale on his show. Uh, if, if you're a Knicks fan or if you're just a basketball fan in general, you should absolutely listen to it. It's a fantastic episode. Fizdale comes off as very, very smart, very basketball knowledgeable. Um, he said all the right things to me in that. And he was already uh, the guy I wanted because of the way he handled the Grizzlies last year, the way he handled the media in the, in the playoffs. I don't remember. He's like, you're not, you're not going to rook us where he was like complaining about the way that the, the Spurs were getting calls and they weren't getting calls. Like he just seems like a great dude. And I'm so excited about the hire and, you know, hopefully they give him some players to work with and hopefully Perzingis comes back healthy and the guy gets a fair shot. Now Perzingis played in the eighties. <laughs> yeah. I couldn't resist. Yeah. I couldn't resist. He'd be Detlef Shrimp, but a foot taller. Yeah. Detlef Shrimp was an all-star. Was Detlef an all-star? He was an all-star, yeah. Oh, Detlef Shrimp from Germany. Do you guys have a clue who we're talking about? No. Yeah. By the way, my favorite, I hate to go back to it, but I have to. I have to. My favorite during all, any of these old versus new players discussions is, I've watched enough on YouTube. I love yeah. that. But Yeah. Edited clips. I watch, dude, I'll watch Hardwood Classics all the yeah. time. If you go on the NBA app, you can watch old games. You can watch random old games. Just the other day, I was watching a uh, Lakers, Golden State Warriors, like early 90s, like Western Conference Finals game. That's like, that's the, you know, that's the epitome of like run and gun early, like Lakers Showtime, like Run TMC fucking early nineties. Yeah, so like the end. Is this the end of? Yeah, the Showtime era. Yeah, late eighties. I think it was even late eighties. Okay, maybe. early nineties. Or it might have even been before the Lakers went on to win whatever. So the epitome of like fast Western Conference. A late '80s, early '90s basketball. You know what? It I- was so slow <laughs> that I thought I was watching. I thought my fucking. I thought my app was freezing. Yeah. I was like, is that Chris Mullen in full speed? He's like, dog, this is as fast as I ever was, dog. He's like, it doesn't get faster than that. He's like, we'll run TMC. I'm the C for Chris. <laughs> the runs for, I mean, honestly, it should be more of a jog TMC. <laughs> we're kind of, we we're, weren't really running. You know what I would have loved to go to, though? The Lakers games when they were at the forum in the 80s. Yeah. It would have been I, fantastic. I just feel like there's no, you know what I don't like is that there's no personality at the Staples Center. The forum had such personality. You know, it's girls, just, you know, hot chicks. I still, more hot I, chicks. I still feel like the Lakers have personality in the arena at Staples. You do? When they're good and when they're playing someone good, it's like now it takes all, basically, it takes all. Everything to line up for it to just be like the feel of like a regular Lakers game back in the day. Because back in the day, you were just happy to see that you're like, we, I know we're going to the finals. We're, we might win, but like uh, we're a part of something. So yeah. now you're like, oh, LeBron comes to town. I've got, you know, I've gotten to see the Knicks and the Lakers. I've seen LeBron versus the Lakers. But it's like that's when all the stars show up. And that's, that's Laker basketball, like having – Denzel and Jack and Eddie Murphy and Wahlberg and like all the stars there, yeah. Beyonce and Jay Z. Like that's that's what makes Lakers basketball cool. Is like man, they have fucking star power. I, no, I get no that. offense to like the John Lake Wazamos and the Michael Rappaports and the Matthew Modines that like hang out on like the front row of the Knicks games because I think that there is something cool about when you're in New York. Like the people that are there are New Yorkers. Yeah. But, I mean, but you're point, getting A-lister after A-lister. I get that. My, my point is just the forum, just just how cool, you know, the history behind it. Where the Staples Center is just the new arena. Right. 
I mean, I, I never went to a game in the forum. Me so either. I can't, I mean, I, you know, I can't speak look, to... Look, I like the Staples Center. Yeah. I've never had a bad time going to a game there. But it's just, I don't know. I, dude, that's why I love Dodger Stadium. It's just, I like something with history. And, and I just, I feel like now all these arenas and ballparks and stadiums, to me, it's really tough to differentiate a lot of them. And, and a lot of them loses that feel of, like, a fucking sports event. Does that make any sense? Yeah, totally. I mean, we, you and I had a blast when we went to uh, Jerry World down, you know, the Cowboy Stadium a few years ago, but I don't know if you remember this. You know, I went to take a leak. There's like a nightclub. Yeah. Like, there's literally people. There's a Cowboys-Giants football game going on. They're not even watching the game. They're partying in a fucking nightclub. Yeah. That's all I'm saying. I didn't know. Sometimes I don't know when you're done. <laughs> like, <laughs> you take like a deep breath like you're going to keep going, and then it's just like, no, it did. I've, it's, I'm going out on that. I'm good. There's a nightclub. <laughs> you talked about uh, the old, what was it? What did you say? Run TMC? Yeah. Don Nelson was in the news. I thought this was great. He now has his own weed called Nelly Kush. I love Don Nelson. Good for Don Nelson. Yeah. So he lives in Hawaii. Of course he does. And he was not a big marijuana guy before. But he, th- listen to this. <laughs> Trevor's claiming Trevor, lies Trevor's calling, Trevor nice. goes straight lies you, Why do you think he's lying when he says that? Because there were stories from like 10 years ago Of him and Willie Nelson and Woody Harrelson But that's, what, that's what I'm about to get to Yeah, that's what I'm saying Those rumors have been like 10 years ago And he was in the article being like Oh no, I, like he was saying I just started smoking weed two years ago Get the fuck out of here Don well, Nelson well, he's saying, yeah, because imagine these poker games. Him, Willie Nelson, Woody Harrelson, and those guys were all smoking, you know, Jays. They're all the high, and they're like, dude, did you, just, did you just realize all our names end in son? Nelson, <laughs> Nelson, Harrelson. This is crazy, man. What are the chances of that? It's like we're all someone's son. They're like, all right, Willie, what the fuck are you smoking? All right, so this is the all quote. On the road again. <laughs> it sounds like this is the one that Trevor's trying to dispute. Uh, he said, I didn't think I'd ever become a pot smoker. I was hanging out with Willie and Woody and guys like that. You know, everybody smokes weed in those games. It just became kind of natural. Usually they're smoking with your friends, sitting around telling jokes. You smoke a bowl. It's not that I smoke all the time. I usually just smoke at night during poker games. Like Willie told me, it's hard to be depressed when you're smoking pot. Yeah, good for Don Nelson. If it... uh there's two options here. Either he's full of shit, which is fine. You know, he wanted to keep up this this image that he didn't smoke when he was in the NBA. Or he fucking, you know, fixed his life. He started, started hanging out with Woody Harrelson and Willie Nelson. He was like, hey, guys, how come you're so fucking cool? And they're like, well, we smoke a ton of pot. And he's like, I haven't, I haven't tried that. And they're like, oh, you should, you should, you should get into it. You know what my mom Dan? said? You know what my mom said when I was recently home and marijuana was brought up? I was kind of almost throwing the carrot out there to be like, let her know. Yeah, I, I occasionally dabble in marijuana. She responded with, it's a gateway. Like, my mom, talk about someone who's not evolving their opinion. This is Michael Jordan. <laughs> It all comes full circle. That was a campaign directed at teaching their generation that it's a gateway drug. I know. And, you're gonna end up, and they believed it. I know. Even though all the evidence says that's complete and utter bullshit. That's what it was. A fucking huge, massive campaign so we're titled, to brainwash We're tied on this episode, Jordan Slurpers or Joanne Ruther. Yeah. We're, we know. <laughs> what, we, should, we should title this as like... The Jordan years equals reefer madness. Like, that's what it is. Like, it's exactly the same thing. Have you ever noticed? Write that down, like, guys. You'll, you'll have. <laughs> they're just all looking at me. They're like, why is he nodding at us? Like, have you ever noticed, like, you, you'll you meet an adult from that era, and they won't, they can't hear you out. I would talk to my dad about it all the time. My dad would be like, you are you have a, a drug addiction. You're addicted to drugs. And my, meanwhile, my dad would get up in the morning and fucking – he had an espresso machine that was literally made of gold. And I was like, you are addicted to a drug too. Caffeine's a drug. He's like, it's different. Repeat Caffeine's what, not a gateway drug. Repeat what you just said for Trevor because he sent me the wrong thing. What? 
reefer madness. I don't know. Mike Michael Jordan is is reefer madness. I don't know. Something like that. Yeah. Oh, I thought you wanted our Joanne Slurpers. No, I'm not putting my mom's name in a title of an episode. <laughs> But it's the exact same thing. It's just a they those people were brainwashed into believing that. And it's honestly I mean, it is their fault, but you know, they're they the government worked hard at it. The government yeah. worked hard to scare these people. Just like fucking corporate America worked hard to teach people in the nineties that Michael Jordan's the best ever and there'll never be anybody better than him. And now you're walking around you, it literally if you're a Michael Jordan defender, you're walking around going Cannabis is a gateway drug. Next thing you know, you're going to be on heroin or crack or meth. Yeah. No, you're not. That's not how it works. Gateway to Taco Bell. Am I right, yeah. guys? Am I right on this one? Am I right? You know what I'm saying? By the way, I I brought my, my pen to my show last night, and I, you know, I was biking home. Man, I am addicted to your, your spot you don't like, Pizza Rito. You love Pizza Rito, huh? Dude, I got, I got stoned. And then what show were you biking back from that you stopped at Pizza Rito? I didn't stop there. I ended up, I ended up biking home, then got in my car. It kind of didn't make sense. <laughs> I was high. I got Stromboli and a slice of pizza, which was so overdoing it. I mean, to the point where I was like lying on my stomach in pain. Yeah, gateway to Stromboli. <laughs> <laughs> Do you guys know how much pizza I ate the other night, by the way? We. I ordered us after we played basketball. We crushed a lot of pizza. Yeah, that was a we lot. Did. We crushed a lot. We of ordered pizza. three large pizzas for the four of us. I for sure ate an entire large. Yeah, I probably had like at least four to five. Slices. Because I went over to do some yeah. real thusting, and let's just say uh, there was a lot of writhing and pain afterwards, lying on my stomach, because you know pizza thusting with dick thusting not a good combo. Did you bring some of that fucking garlic butter. No, but she also had Reese's peanut butter cups, and I was like... Reese's. <laughs> How's it pronounced? Reese's. Reese's? Reese's. Reese's? Yeah. We've gone over this many times on the show. What do I always call it? Reese's. Yeah. And t- then, even though it's clear how it's supposed to rhyme, Reese's pieces, you say Reese's pieces. <laughs> what the fuck is a pieces? Yeah, Reese's pieces. This sounds good right now. Reese's Pieces. Like, is this dude fucking with me? He means Reese's Pieces, right? Oh, man. Good times. Prano, are you yeah. are you impressed with my outfit tonight? I am. Trevor was. Yeah? Trevor, what did he Tre- say? Trevor said to me, he goes, you going out tonight after the show? You look good. I said, I'm not going anywhere. I'm just wearing my flag and anthem. I got the three-quarter tee. Which, as you know, is probably the best thing for me. I got the navy blue chinos mm-hmm. and the backwards flag and anthem mesh hat. I'm full flag and anthem gear. Looking sharp. I've got some flag and anthem jeans and my my new favorite that I have. Like I think I have four of these now. Just the flag and anthem pocket tee. Yeah, I like that. Looks you don't good. Have a flag and anthem pocket tee. I don't. I'm I don't a, know. I don't know what you're doing. Everyone should get it, but I I don't because I'm letting you have that. Thanks, man. <laughs> Because we have a lot of the same clothes now. I was thinking we should do a flag and anthem thing where I, because I know you've got Trevor some gear. I don't know if Weird Twitter got gear yet. He's still pretty new to the game. Yeah, and I'm not sure what he does here yet, except play hoops with us. <laughs> 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 but I like him. He's, he brings a good energy. Um, I'm not sure what he does here yet. <laughs> but I think we should do a thing where we like all put together our best flag and anthem outfit, and we'll like put it on Instagram and see if you can get the most likes. You know, do a little flag and anthem. Fashion competition? I think we should do a runway, walkway with Flag and Anthem. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll build a walkway by the pool. and You know how they... You'll build something? <laughs> I don't know if we need to build anything. You I'll... build a new rug in here before we start building yeah. fucking... I'm going to build a walkway over the pool. Yeah. You know, we could have like the Savage Town runway fashion show. We could have homeless people come and, and raid us. Well, Dirtballs, you can look as good as us... By going to flagandanthem.com and drop promo code DIRTY at checkout. It gets t- gets you 25% off your first order. It's a quarter. That is a lot of money. So I know you guys need to step up your clothes game. I was yeah. looking for the word. Just go to flagandanthem.com, drop promo code DIRTY to get 25% off. And you can look as good as us. Because I look good and I fucking know it. <laughs> I'll just be honest. I'm sexy I- and I know it. <laughs> <laughs> Did you fart? No. Was that a fart? No. 
<laughs> that was definitely a fart. That was a just fart. fart? <laughs> you fart. No, that was me doing. I was about to go into the. Uh, I was about to go into like the. Wait a second. That was a fart. <laughs> Wait a you second. This is, this, is, I would, this is fart gate. I would have. I would happily. I mean, geez, can you imagine if I like? Why would I pretend that I didn't? I fart? looked right at Trevor. <laughs> and he, he farted. He tried to act like he farted. I mean, it'll be. You'll, you'll have it. You'll have it on the Mevo. Yeah, I was watching the Mevo, and I I, I saw the mouth move. <laughs> You'll have it. No, uh, no, no, no. Watch no, the Mevo. Watch no, the Mevo. No. You're just trying to set hey, up to him because he said all, he didn't know what you do. <laughs> no, hey. That's I'm okay. All, we hoop. I'm all for so. Fartgate. I mean, look. Controversy is always good. I think he farted there. We have to slow we have to slow mo that. Let's talk a little baseball and wrap up the show. Great. No, I'm not saying it's going to be two minutes. I'm just saying we're going to wrap up the show afterwards. These guys are giggling over there. Albert Pujols. Someone we can appreciate. We should appreciate. 3,000 hits now. Yeah. More importantly, Albert Pujols is only the fourth player in the history of baseball to get 3,000 hits, 600 home runs. The other three are Willie Mays, Hank Aaron, Alex Rodriguez. Only the fourth ever. Yeah. I mean... Cool stats, but if he was doing it against Walter Johnson in the 1890s, maybe it would mean something. <laughs> you fucking losers. He would, no. he, Sandy Koufax would have struck him yeah, out Sam. every time. Yeah. Onus uh, Wagner would have owned him. Yeah. Um, no, Pujols is straight up a an all-timer. I mean, he consistently, I think however many years it was when he first came into the big leagues where it was like 30 homers and – was it 90 RBIs every year? I don't think it was 100, but it was like 30 and 90 or 30 and 100 for, like, again, it was like an Ichiro thing where it was like 10 straight years or something absurd. Yeah. He had it from the time he came in in 2001 until all the way until what, 2013. 30 and almost 90. 90. 30 and 90. 30 and 90. Almost yeah. 100. Only, yeah. Yeah. only one year he had 99 RBIs. Yeah. So his first... 12 years, he had at least 99 RBIs and 30 home runs every year. For 12 years. How many rings, though? <laughs> Fucking dorks. And he got he got two, right? He got he two got, with he the got Cardinals. Couple, got a couple against St. Louis. Yeah. And, and I think what's happened is since he went to the Angels, obviously we've seen a, you know, a massive decline in his numbers because you just can't – keep up that rate unless you're LeBron James. Right. Uh statistically, but I think we really need to again appreciate this guy as as a guy from Cincinnati. I fucking hated him. Yeah. Because but he's also got like what do you hate about him? You just I hate that he's fucking good. But that's what I'm saying. I didn't like hate him personally. Yeah. You just were like fuck, poo holes. I got we got to face this guy 20 times a year. Yeah. He's so good. What was this what was the stat they has with Mays and Three thousand hits, six hundred home 600 runs. Six hundred homers. Even with the Angels for seven years, only there's been six of those years that he's had ninety RBIs. Plus. Yeah. Only one of them where he had a shortened season, where only played ninety nine games that he had like sixty four RBIs. Yeah, that's a good point. But so, six out of those seven years, he still had plus ninety RBIs each year. Yeah, he's an all timer. I mean, you could argue he's like, you could argue he'd be your starting first baseman, yeah, all time team. Pretty and what's his career average? 304. <laughs> That's stupid. That's stupid numbers. He until he went to the Angels, he never batted below 312. I'm sorry, 299. Yeah. That's stupid numbers, dude. His career average is 304, 40 and 120. No. <laughs> Well, 39 and 120 kind of rounded it up a little bit. Still, sound better, that still, is yeah. fucking dumb shit. 304, 40, and That's 120. dumb shit. Yeah. So, I mean, who's your starting all-time first baseman? I think I'm going Albert Pools. <laughs> Who would you go ahead of him? I don't know. Gehrig? <laughs> yeah. You just, you can't. Yeah. yeah I mean, he's he's that good. Holy shit. I mean, the 3,000 hits and 600 home runs. Again, you're talking Willie Mays, Hank Aaron, A-Rod. 
But it's not even just a longevity thing. I mean, we're talking about 2001, right? Or 2003 he came in the league? 2001. 2001. So we're at we're at 17. It's not even like a crazy like he hit 304 for his career. Yeah. And he's a two-time Gold Glove winner. Yeah. Three-time MVP. He probably should have had more than that. It's like, it's like the it's like the LeBron thing, like batting titles. No. I think I think he did because he bat. The, yeah, the, the black is the black the is black's batting titles. Two thousand three, he bat at three fifty nine. <laughs> That's hilarious. So he bat three fifty nine. Bro, bro, listen, listen to his stats in two thousand three. Listen to Albert Pujols' stats in two thousand three. He batted three fifty nine. He had 43 home runs, 124 RBIs. Yeah. Dumb shit. All-timer. He's my all-time starting first baseman. I don't know who you take besides him. I think we just solved that. (laughs) We are in agreement. No one's wearing the L chin on this one. (laughs) So Max Scherzer today struck out 15 batters of the first 19 outs. So there, there was more talk of could Ruther make contact with fifty pitches. I don't think this shows that I couldn't. That's all I'm saying. Yeah, I mean, well, uh, by the way, we talked about this on Dirty Slides. Did you hear about this? I listened to the yeah, I listened to we, Dirty Slides. Uh, Laz is a guy throwing high eighties on his on the gaze. We thought maybe you want to hit off him as a warm up. You just can't hit my head with the ball though. That's what I, I mean, worry about. Obviously. <laughs> I mean, I can't be dying out here. Yeah, I don't think anybody's thrown at you. <laughs> well, I don't know. I mean, certainly you're not going to get hit on purpose. And that's, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. Who? Why would he throw? You even this guy doesn't even know you. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, man. Maybe I've made some enemies in my. Don't game. worry. Like, I, that'd be great, though. I walk out. You're at the plate. I walk out to the mound. I just hand him the ball. I go, uh, he pronounces it Reese's Pieces. Good luck out there. <laughs> like, Thonk. Scherzer lost today, though. That's what's so crazy about that game. Yeah. Well, that's because he didn't have that fucking killer instinct. <laughs> cool stat Cool stat pad, bro. I'm sure you like that as a Mets guy. Well, yeah, I mean, I don't. I, I certainly don't want the Nationals to win ever, but I do appreciate Max Scherzer. I mean, he's fucking, he's been legit, and he's been legit for a long time. He's he's dirty, man. So you guys are getting rid of Matt Harvey. You're, you have. We weren't even getting rid of him. He You, 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 you put him on, you, you sent him down to the minors. No. And he, and he so, refused. Yeah, basically. And, and then it's designated for assignment, that what it's called? Yeah. So he has he has a week. To, he had a week from when it happened to either be sent down to the minors or released. They just wanted to send him down to the minors and get him right because they moved him to the bullpen and he was shit. Yeah, but he doesn't. He doesn't want to go to the minors. He didn't want to stop being a starting pitcher. Well, he's he's lose the fucking ego, bro. Yeah, I mean, it's not even. I don't even know how. Like, I just don't know the answer. If you're a guy like Matt Harvey. And you're not good. And obviously is something wrong. And you say you're healthy. So then it's obviously uh, you know, it's it's obviously a you problem. Yeah. You're 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 saying it's not your body, you're not hurt. So then you just need you're just like not doing it. And no one doesn't think he has like the ability. It's just there's something wrong with the technique. But he didn't want to. It's like Carmelo Anthony. He, you stink, dude. So when people go like, "How do you feel about going to the bullpen?" and you go, "I'm a starting pitcher," it's like, in what world do you think that the Mets are just going to keep trotting you out there, even though you're bad? And he's only 29. Yeah. So like, I just don't understand what's going on in his mind where he's like, "I'm a starting pitcher," and it's like, "Well, you suck at that." So what do you want us to do? And then he goes to the bullpen. He sucked at that. And it's like, hey, man, obviously we need to get you right. Let's go to the minors. So it's just been an ego issue the whole way along. It's like, dude, you're not a starting pitcher. If you, okay, I'm a starting pitcher. Okay, you're a very, very bad one. So those guys aren't in baseball. And, like, 
just just be go fuck man i just gotta you know the, the attitude to take is like i just gotta go down to the minors and figure it out and he I'll doesn't give a shit about baseball and, and obviously i listened to what you guys said on dirty slides about it and i think it's true it's just he doesn't give a shit right if he gave a shit he'd try to write the ship the problem is he in essence he has to care about baseball because what is Matt Harvey if he's not a baseball player? That's what you guys were saying. Just a dude, like what are you saying? Just a guy who, just a dude who parties at uh, nightclubs. Yeah, bottle but, service. but also he, we're not talking about a guy who's in the Albert Pujols like part of his career where he just like refuses to give up, but like he has made. A th- he had a three hundred and fifty million dollar contract. He was on his rookie deal. He took arbitration. I think he makes like four million bucks or something like that. Like that money goes fast when you're like just hanging out at nightclubs and just going to Rangers game. And if you're not Matt Harvey the pitcher, or you're Matt Harvey the terrible pitcher, yeah, you don't. The, the Rangers don't just give you f- front row seats anymore. You're gonna have to start paying for hockey tickets. You're gonna have to start fucking buying bottles if you want to hang out at the club because no one gives a shit about a guy who's not in the big leagues. Yeah, not that it's only, but he's only made about twenty million in his seven years pitching. That's more than I thought he would have made. A lot of it's coming on these last three years. His first five years, he'd make a million. Do you know what I would do? We got his signing bonus, but other than that, no. Do you know how nice a carpet I could get for twenty million in the oh, yeah, Twenty million would be nice, but yeah, say not our pools money. Yeah. yeah, you know. I just don't know. Like he wasn't even good enough, and he was he had moments, but he wasn't even good enough long enough for him to like live on that. Yeah, you I know. know what I mean? know what you're saying. Like he Joe Namath just had the Super Bowl, but. Joe Namath doesn't have to fucking buy a drink in New York anywhere he goes, and he never will. Yeah. Because he won a Super Bowl with the Jets, their last Super Bowl. Like, the dude, if the dude shows up at fucking, you know, Morton's Steakhouse in New York, and he's like, hey, I want some steaks and some fucking, and they're like, yeah, you're Joe Namath, dude. We get it. Just let us know what you want. There's, like, you know, it'd be nice if you could tip the server. We'd appreciate that because she doesn't get a cut of this, but... You're Joe that, Namath. That just means Matt, name. That just means name is pulling his dick out. Yeah, but Let's Matt Matt Harvey, it's like, dude, you 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 know, you had one nice World Series game that you stayed in. You you begged to stay in, and then you blew the game, and fuck, like, I mean, how long does that? How how many free drinks does that get you? It's not Clayton Kershaw we're talking about here. Well, good segue, Prano. Thanks. I know what I'm doing here. It's not my first rodeo. 10-day DL for Clayton Kershaw. Man, the Doyers. Times are tough. What's their record? 15 and 19. Yeah. They had a rough weekend, right? Trev, how'd you guys do this weekend? Yep, they lost their last two. They were in Mexico, too, by the way. Well, they, right. threw, they threw the combined no-hitter in Mexico. Yeah, well, whatever. Yeah, but yeah. Which I love, by the way. You know, I love those foreign games. I'm, right. I'm big on that. Big on that. <laughs> Wasn't it last episode? You're like absolutely not a Super Bowl in London. <laughs> baseball's different though, right? Because baseball is more of a of a, a world sport, especially with with the it's literally our pastime. Yeah, but <laughs> the fucking you know with the Latin countries. EJ's people have taken yeah. it over. EJ's hipsters. <laughs> Would you consider yourself a hipster? Yeah, you're a hipster. Not at all. No, I, not at all. Really? I actually, not at all. I actually, don't consider myself. Have you a been to Puerto Rico? Yes, I've been to Puerto Rico. How many times? Like at least twenty times. At least twenty times. Yeah, I have you family, still family there. Yeah. Cool. So you do know how to swim? Yeah. And God. Yeah. He was swimming God. in your pool two <laughs> days ago. Well, that's why tonight I've been in your pool twice. Yeah. Apparently, this is actually this is some good behind the scenes stuff. So these guys came back all freezing from my pool. And uh, they're all cold. They they couldn't go in the hot tub because apparently there was like some gay orgy. Apparently, Savage Town was overtaken by a bunch of gay dudes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, was you know, Margaret I'm, in I'm there? I'm all poor. Margaret yeah, I'm wasn't poor. there. You know, more power to you. Whatever you got to do. But it was like five gay guys going at it. Like, and you guys like, did like, text me? Up? Wait, hooking up? For, uh, uh, just as damn Yeah, like, like two or three of them, yeah. But it was it was more and like you guys didn't text me. How dare you? No, but it was more like we just we knew we'd have to make the conversation if we sat in the hot tub with them and then talk. And it's like we just wanted to come back. So you hate gay people? Oh my god, yeah. it's, it's fine. 
No, it's not fine. I'm kidding. I know you didn't. I know. Well, but, that's how you know he's not a hipster, too. Hipster would be like, actually, you have to get in the hot tub in that situation <laughs> because, like, that, you have to show strength with them. I like how you asked if Margaret was there. Her and I had a big, long convo again yesterday. I learned yeah. a lot more about her. There's rumors she might be. She we haven't w- talked about Margaret on the show either because that just happened on Friday, too. Yeah, we have not. Why does that feel like it was two weeks ago to me? A lot's happened. Yeah, I know. It does feel like it so was so Margaret's the, the, I mean, she she's lives definitely my, a senior. She's probably in her 70s. Yeah. She lives on my floor. She told me more yesterday. You know, she she's a widow. Her her husband passed away. She didn't tell me when. That's, I know what a widow is. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> she's a widow. Her husband is uh, missing. <laughs> I learned more about her, by the way. Yeah. Uh, she is a retired lung doctor. Wow. So she's smart. Then she also offered to cook me a meal. Ooh, were you like I'll bring over? Were you like I'll bring over some Blue Apron? Yeah, here we go. Well, yeah, she was cooking a meal for one of the other residents who, one of the other residents, she she was in a bad motorcycle accident. So she was cooking a meal for her, and she's like, she came out yesterday, and this is the truth. She came out yesterday. She saw me in the hot tub, and I was hanging out with the mayor, and she said, "I want to suck your cock." No, Jesus <laughs> Christ, Trevor, Trev. have some respect for this Trev. woman. So <laughs> Trevor's like, I'm not afraid of you. I'm not afraid of you. Afraid of you. <laughs> Coming in hot with the vulgarity. <laughs> Of a senior citizen. No, she said uh, she saw me. I was hanging out. I mean, do, don't you know where you are, Trevor? You can't be making fun of seniors. Anyway, how's that nun with herpes doing? <laughs> <laughs> Sister Jean is quite well. I, you, I did teach Trevor well. Uh, she goes, I was going to put a note on your door because I really enjoyed the conversation with you and your friends. So she gave all you guys love. And she's like, you guys are great. And you guys are I polite. And <laughs> Jesus Christ, Trevor. And... Uh, I find her fascinating and interesting. Uh-huh. That's nothing else to say. <laughs> All right. Cool. I mean, isn't it crazy? You know, a woman in her 70s no moves here from New York. She's living now on my floor. She's lonely. Get it together over there, Trevor. <laughs> I'm, I got it together. <laughs> All right. We need to wrap up this episode. We're almost at that limit, Prano. Okay. For the uh, Amiibo. Uh, that's it. So that's the only way we wrap it up. Trevor making inappropriate <laughs> oral sex jokes with a senior citizen. You can see Joe this week. I know he's got a lot of shows to talk about. I do. Yeah. I will be in the Bay Area this week. I, I'm leaving first thing. I'm, I'm leaving crack of dawn Wednesday. I'm going straight to the Oakland Coliseum. Yo, fool. For my very first Oakland Coliseum experience, the defending champion Houston Astros visiting the Oakland Athletics. I'm going to watch that game, and then I will be there all weekend for shows. Uh, I was supposed to do Thursday and Friday at the Setup, which is a great comedy club in the beer basement in San Francisco, but apparently they're doing a private show on Thursday, so I will now be doing two sets on Friday at the setup uh, in the beer basement in San Francisco. It's in the Tenderloin, I believe. It is, uh, it's a super fun show. There's an 8 o'clock show and a 10 o'clock show. So my apologies if you were planning on going to Thursday. If you already bought tickets, uh, just reach out to them. They know that uh, some, some of you dirt balls were going to come. So just make your arrangements, switch it up for Friday. Um, and then Saturday, I will be headlining Laugh City in Oakland, which... Uh, I know some dirt balls are going to come at, out too. That's the first place I met Wendy. That's the first place I met uh, fucking Mexican McLovin. No, actually, I think I met Mexican McLovin at a the hair extension Wait, comedy have, show. Have I done Laugh City? Yeah, that's the one. That's we, Lyle's show. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Fun, fun room. It's a good room. So if you're a Bay Area dirt ball, come out. Uh, I and again for anybody in the Bay Area and anybody who wants to come to the stand up and stadiums tour this summer. The shows will – I'll constantly be adding shows to the schedule. So if it doesn't look like I'm coming, keep checking. Every time you see the poster, look at it in detail because I'm going to keep adding dates and keep adding shows. I might add some more shows in the Bay while I'm up there. But definitely Friday in San Francisco, two shows. Definitely Saturday in Oakland. Definitely going to the Oakland A's game on Wednesday afternoon. So come check it out. Rest of my shows, JoePrano.com. At Joe Prano on Instagram, at Fix Your Life on Twitter, where I'm fixing all kinds of lives. And, uh, yeah, I think that's it. JoePrano.com for all the shows. Cool. Give us some love on uh, iTunes, as always. 
Drop an iTunes review. Give us those five stars. Or you can say, fuck you, Ruther, and give me one star. But that's not good for you either, Prano. But that's all right. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't. Uh, YouTube. We're churning out that content. New Stone in Venice came out today. Uh, and I will continue to do those once a week with my with my team here, my team of guys, EJ, Trevor. We're trying to make things happen. I think we're going to need to set up that I uh, that iPhone tripod too. Start filming some of these basketball games now that Trevor's just like laid down the gauntlet. Yeah, Trevor, you better watch it because I live across the street from that place, which means I can practice my jump shot. <laughs> I'm gonna be making it rain all day long. Still not scared. <laughs> You know what sucks about this whole thing is this means that now I just have to keep guarding Prano, which obviously didn't work. So it's like... Yeah, he's putting some serious pressure on you. Anyway, follow me on Twitter, at Andy Ruther. You can follow these guys, at Billy Badass for Trevor. (laughs) (laughs) Trevor underscore nickel. At EJ Gomez. All right, guys, that's the episode. And the interns. We got an episode of the interns coming out anytime soon? Next week. We dropped one this week. Next week, I like it. They were too busy hanging out in the hot tub. They didn't. They didn't get up here. Hanging out with Bar- the hanging out we Barger, the get, catching BJ's. <laughs> Jesus, catch, ca- catching that widow head. <laughs> <laughs> She's such a sweet woman. <laughs> She's such a sweet woman. Sucking like I still got blood running through it, Margaret. All right, guys. Thanks for listening, and most importantly, Wait, don't forget. Did, did you give all your stuff? Yeah, you're Andy Ruther. Everybody knows where they are. <laughs> Condoms are for pussies. Welcome to, welcome to the Dirt and Sports Podcast.